The rainy season in the country from June to December coincides with the flu season. And this year, we're also up against a pandemic. Let's learn the similarities and the differences between influenza and COVID-19, and how you can protect yourselves and your loved ones from either one. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez. Welcome to MedTalk Health Talk right here on CNN Philippines. It's the flu season amid a pandemic. Influenza or trancaso and COVID-19 are both very contagious respiratory illnesses, but they're caused by different viruses. Joining us now are Dr. Karen Garcia. She's a family medicine specialist and vice president of the Philippine Academy of Family Physicians. Also joining us is Dr. Michelle Joy Devera. She's an immunologist from the Medical City. We're glad to have both of you on today's episode. Now let's go straight to how we can prevent the flu. Doctors will recommend getting the flu vaccine to reduce the chances of getting the virus. Now, Dr. Garcia, when is the best time to get a flu shot? Thank you, Dr. Fred. So the flu season is actually already occurring. This is starting from uh, June to uh, November. So the best time to actually get immunized, even though we know that the influenza or the flu occurs during this peak season before the peak of the uh, flu season, which is probably in the summer months. No? So this is the best time to have it administered, but it does not, it's not contraindicated that you can actually also get it anytime. Now, Dr. Devera, when you get the vaccine, when you get the flu vaccine, does it mean that you won't catch the flu at all? So we want to explain the benefits of the annual flu shot. The good thing about the flu vaccine is that if you get it, it drastically reduces the chance of you getting uh, infected by the influenza virus. Um, however, obviously, there are other viral uh, infections that you can get that is not uh, protected, that you're not protected of by getting the flu vaccine. So that's one reason why you can get flu-like uh, diseases uh, even though you get the flu vaccine. The other possibility is that it takes some time for a person to make antibodies against uh, the flu after you get uh, the vaccine. So at in the minimum, it takes about two weeks maybe for you to get uh, antibodies. So in that particular time, you might still get uh, infected by the flu. So it doesn't totally prevent you from getting the flu, but it certainly um, drastically decreases the risk for getting the flu at all. It also uh, decreases the risk of you getting severe uh, symptoms when you do get the flu uh, virus. That's right. So it's advisable, of course, to have a proper conversation with your doctor or healthcare provider before getting the flu shot. But Dr. Garcia, who should be getting the flu vaccine? That's a good question. Okay, so actually children as young as six months of age to elderly can administer, we can give the vaccine on a yearly basis. So, and including here, these are vulnerable populations, no, Dr. Fred, and uh, they are the ones who are really in need to be updated in terms of administering the flu vaccine. Okay, and there's also something uh, with some individuals that we should be careful for because they should not uh, be getting the flu shot. Dr. Devera, can you help us uh, understand uh, who should, who should uh, not be getting the flu shot or who should avoid getting the flu shot? Um, the only uh, true contraindication to getting the flu vaccine is if a person has had the flu vaccine in the past and had a major anaphylactic or a really severe allergic reaction to the flu shot. Uh, that's the total contraindication. But other patients, other uh, people, there should not be a problem getting the flu, uh, flu vaccine at all. So overall, in general, it is safe to be getting the flu vaccine. And as we mentioned earlier, the flu vaccine can reduce your chances of getting the flu by as much as 60%. But after you get your annual shot, it's also good to know that there are those who will experience side effects. Dr. Garcia, let's discuss what these are. Okay, so common um, adverse reactions after vaccine administration will be soreness in the area or the site where you are vaccinated. 
And some would actually have some feverish-like symptoms, but it won't last, no? So these are common, and uh, we inform our patients about this, and uh, it's pretty practically uh, a very safe and not uh, kind of a toxic kind of an adverse effect. Okay, now do you have the seasonal flu or is it COVID-19? We'll explain the symptoms of both and understand how we can differentiate one from the other. We'll be right back. You're watching CNN Philippines. It's good to have you on the show. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez on MedTalk Health Talk. There are different flu viruses that circulate each year. And it's important to know that the flu vaccine you receive each year has different strains of the flu. So pwedeng ang formulation ng flu vaccine na makukuha mo ngayong taon ay iba sa nakalipas na taon. Now, Dr. Devera, can we further discuss this? What they do is uh, there are certain... Um institutions or uh, organizations that decide what flu, the strains of flu, will be more likely to infect people for that particular year. So that would include the WHO, the CDC. Uh, and so what they try to do is try to figure out, so what's the most common uh, virus that will infect us? And that's what they're going to tell the vaccine manufacturers so that that's what they're going to include in their uh, uh, vaccine for the following year. Um, if you think about the flu vaccine, there's different kinds of flu vaccines. And so there's one that has three strains and another one that has four strains. But in general, the strains that are added on is dictated, I suppose, by uh, these large organizations that, uh, that manage the data. Okay. Now, influenza and COVID-19 have very similar symptoms, which range from no symptoms or is asymptomatic to severe symptoms. Let's start with fever and or feeling feverish. Dr. Garcia, while it doesn't uh, affect all patients, what temperature should uh, uh, our viewers be watching out for? Fever is actually 37.8 and above, okay? So, but for uh, feverish-like symptoms, so lower than that, we are already alarmed. So 37.6, uh, 37.5, then that's already um, like a warning that uh, maybe you'll really get uh, fever. When do these symptoms start happening and, and how can we treat uh, these symptoms once they do start? Symptoms of flu uh, disease would include your fever, your body pains, okay, generalized fatigue. Some would have cough, runny nose, uh, sore throat. So the best here is really supportive care. So if you have fever or feverish-like symptoms, taking your antipyretics, your paracetamol will help. Uh, we advise our patients to actually drink lots of water and boost their immune system, okay? So, and then actually, if they can isolate themselves first, okay, so that uh, they cannot contact it with others. Also, a common symptom is the lack of energy or yung panghihina ng tao, no? which is expected to last for two weeks or so. Now, Dr. Garcia, how does a patient deal with this sort of symptom and what can be done in order to help manage this? Yes, it's part of the uh, uh, what we call the incubation or the uh, clinical picture of patients with flu disease. So even as early as a day before, you know, we try to tell them to rest. Okay? And then until symptoms already appear, the peak where the disease will actually um, is very contagious is within the three to four days. And all of these um, symptoms can last a week or two. So it's advisable to... Okay, hydrate themselves, okay, boost their immune. And of course, I hope they were uh, vaccinated uh, previously. Dr. Devera, are there any complications that patients uh, or their caregivers need to watch out for or before they may think that something is alarming or progressing? So the symptoms are very, sometimes can, can be very mild. So a little bit of body aches, fever, cough, etc. But there is uh, certainly a population of patients that can get uh, severe disease and certainly complications. So this can be the very young, um, the very old, so senior citizens, and those with underlying problems that can affect their immune system. 
So for instance, patients with cancer or diabetes or patients with lung or heart disease. So what are the severe kinds of uh, complications that you can get? You can get really bad pneumonias. Um, you can get uh, certainly respiratory failure. Um, you can get uh, uh, complications uh, uh, affecting your heart. Uh, so, and, and if you have diabetes, for instance, uh, sugar control might be difficult to do when you have the flu. So even more important for these vulnerable populations to truly, as Dr. Garcia was saying, get the flu vaccine uh, so that the chances of getting it or acquiring it is even less. Now, we know that having the flu is very similar symptom-wise with that of COVID-19. Dr. Devera, what are some of the distinct symptoms of COVID-19 that can help patients understand what's happening to them? Ah, the million-dollar question. <laughs> How do you differentiate between flu and uh, COVID? Um, as was seen in that slide that you showed earlier, the symptoms can be very similar. So fever, cough, um, body aches, sore throat. Uh, in general, if it's COVID, however, one of the most common symptoms uh, and very distinct symptoms is loss of uh, the sense of taste and smell. Uh, there's also less likely to have like runny nose and sneezing. So these are more likely to be associated. So the loss of smell and the loss of taste more likely to be associated with COVID. Um, also in general, although not all the time, the symptoms last longer uh, for COVID uh, as compared to the flu uh, disease. Of course, uh, many of us are hesitant to quickly go to the hospital to get checked during this pandemic. But as we said, call your doctor first and discuss your symptoms. In the meantime, while waiting, we can start addressing some of these symptoms at home. Dr. Devera, ano pa ba ang pwedeng uh, natin gawin uh, as someone who wants to be conscious about their health? What can they do in order to prevent it or even manage uh, symptoms that they may have? Well, especially now, since we're talking about infectious diseases, it's important to maintain or to keep your immune system healthy. So what can you do? Uh, I think our grandmothers were correct, so get enough sleep, uh, good sleep, uh, uh, get good nutrition, so a really healthy diet helps, uh, so your fruits and vegetables, yung pinggan, yung platong Pinoy, so lots of fruits and vegetables, bit of protein and carbohydrates. Um, also, minimizing stress, also, although that might be difficult in these times because we're all stressed out, but things that you can do to minimize uh, stressful uh, uh, events in your life will be really helpful in making your immune system healthy. Timely diagnosis is critical here. And of course, as we've been saying, prevention is key. Aside from the flu vaccine, there are other ways to prevent the flu. More after a short break. Please stay with us right here on MedTalk Health Talk. It's good to have you on MedTalk Health Talk. Today, we're talking about the flu during this time of COVID-19. Getting your annual flu shot is just one of the many ways that we can protect ourselves and our loved ones from the flu. Dr. Devera, we want to talk about some of the other steps we can take. Pareho rin sa pag-prevent ng COVID-19. So pagdating sa pagpapalakas ng immune system, most people uh, will turn to a very popular vitamin that is vitamin C. So Dr. Devera, what is your opinion on how vitamin C can help us? I think vitamins are great. Uh, we need them. We need them for a lot of processes in our body. Uh, but the data on vitamin C and preventing uh, flu or COVID is minimal. So it's not as if, okay, if I get massive doses of vitamin C, I'm not going to get the flu. Uh, certainly it's important because it's an antioxidant. But it's not 100% uh, uh, a guarantee that you're going to prevent yourself from getting these diseases. But yes, get your vitamins, get your minerals, especially if you get it from um, uh, fresh sources, like food instead of like tablets, for instance. 
Very good. Now, Dr. Garcia, in terms of keeping our surroundings clean, ano naman ang mga advantages nito? Yes, thank you, Dr. Fred. So that's actually one preventive measure that's looking into everyday preventive actions to stop the spread of this uh, virus. So keeping yourself clean and keeping your surrounding clean is actually helping contain the virus. And uh, one air, one uh, the, the following measures that you can do is to actually uh, clean and disinfect the, the surfaces or areas that uh, may be contaminated with the virus. For yourself as well, no, you need to avoid close contact with people who are sick. And if you yourself are sick, okay, as much as possible to keep them, you have to keep away from them so and for them not to be infected. Okay? So throw used uh, tissues or napkins, okay? avoid touching your eyes, your face, and uh, the, what we always tell our patients, wash your hands 20 seconds a day, 20 seconds for 20 seconds, and at least, okay, if there's no... Um, available water or soap, then uh, use your alcohol uh, rubs, okay, alcohol-based hand rubs. Now, Dr. Garcia, just a follow-up question. Well, for several months, uh, a lot of us uh, have been trying to be healthy and trying to prevent all of this. But on one unfortunate effect of this is the fatigue that people sometimes feel in trying to practice all of these health uh, preventive maneuvers. What can you advise our viewers to still remain vigilant, to still remain uh, strong in trying to prevent diseases? Yes, that's a very important question. It's not only physical fatigue, Dr. Fred, it's also the mental fatigue, the anxiety and the worry of the several months, and it's causing a lot of toll to our patients and the families. Okay, So um, for advice to our patients is, you know, um, let's, let's just keep being vigilant, okay? Let's just not remove the, that uh, part of us that uh, we need to, uh, you know, be safe, okay? Do safety measures. That's the only way to protect ourselves and our families. And of course, um, some of us would need some support from others. So we advise them to talk to their support system for some counselors or even, um, uh, you know, whatever spiritual care that they can, okay, that they can gather so that, uh, you know, these measures will uh, in, in totally help them, okay, go through this uh, physical and mental fatigue. And at the risk of sounding like a broken record, we'll say it again, good personal hygiene will protect you against various illnesses. Ulitin lang natin, hand hygiene is very, very important, lalo na ngayon. So wash your hands often with soap and water. Please do so during the course of your day. If you have breaks in your skin, wounds or cuts, get them treated right away. Remember, intact skin is a barrier or protection against germs. And last but not least, please practice respiratory etiquette. Cover your mouth when coughing or sneezing. And with that, we'd like to thank our guests for today, family medicine specialist, Dr. Karen Garcia, and immunologist, Dr. Michelle Joy Devera. And to all of you watching, stay safe, and we'll see you again here on MedTalk Health Talk. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez. Have a good rest of your day.